This farm has a total of 450 cows. We have four robots, each with a maximum capacity to milk 60 cows. Currently, we haven't reached full capacity yet. We are at about 180 cows. I estimate that in two or three months, we will reach full capacity. Currently, we have an average of 2.7 to 2.8 milkings per cow per day. In the robotic milking system, we use pelleted. The average intake is around 4.7 to 5 kilograms of balanced feed per cow in the robotic milking system. This farm produces more than 40 liters per cow. At the moment, the average production is slightly lower, around 36 liters, as we are integrating many cows. On the other farm, which uses the traditional milking system, the average is between 30 and 31 liters. Welcome to our Santa Fe channel. I'm here with Diego Bertea two years after our first visit. Please, Diego, introduce yourself and tell us where we are. Thank you very much for considering us and giving us the opportunity to show what we are doing in the different production systems here in Argentina. And what is this farm? This is a farm that combines a traditional milking system with a robotic milking system. And in fact, it's the same farm. Calvings are concentrated in the traditional system where fresh cows, lactating cows, prepartum cows, and everything related to rearing and calf management are housed. Once a week, the cows are moved to the robotic milking system. Initially, we kept the traditional system because many cows did not adapt to the robotic milking system. To avoid the stress of adaptation, this system was maintained. The cows give birth in the other system and are brought here weekly. How many cows are here? Yes, there are 450 cows with an average production of 36 liters. This farm has a total of 450 cows. We have four robots, each with a maximum capacity to milk 60 cows. Currently, we haven't reached full capacity yet. We are at about 180 cows. We are in a transition phase, bringing cows from the other system into this one. I estimate that in two or three months, we will reach full capacity. This farm produces more than 40 liters per cow. At the moment, the average production is slightly lower, around 36 liters, as we are integrating many cows. On the other farm, which uses the traditional milking system, the average is between 30 and 31 liters. Here, we use a feeding system where we provide a PMR, partially mixed ration, and the remaining concentrate is provided through the robots. The PMR is formulated with alfalfa hay, chopped alfalfa pasture, or in winter, we use winter pastures such as oats. It also includes corn silage, ground corn, and soybean hulls. This makes up the PMR. During milking, a certain amount of balanced feed is allocated to each cow according to its production and stage of lactation. The main challenge in switching from a traditional feeding system to a robotic system is adjusting the feed for each cow individually, or at least that's my perspective. How do we manage this? The PMR is the same for all animals, but we create feeding tables according to each cow's stage of lactation and production. Until peak lactation, we allocate a certain amount of balanced feed, and after the peak, we adjust the feeding more precisely based on the individual production of each cow. This robotic milking system is unique because it is combined with a dry lot system. There are other systems based on composting or freestall, but this one is a bit different. The system is divided into three areas. The first is the dry lot, where the cows rest. The second is the robotic milking area, where the four robots are located. And the third is the feeding lane. For a cow to access the PMR feed in the lane, it must pass through the robot, being milked before consuming the feed. After feeding, it returns to the resting area in the dry lot. Our current major challenge is stimulating a certain number of cows that do not feel the need to be milked voluntarily. We are exploring ways to encourage these cows to increase the number of milkings. Next week, we will implement a system 
that divides the dry lot into three sections, A, B, and C. We will manage by section, where the most delayed cows will stay in section A, pass through the robotic milking, go to the feeding lane, and then move to section C. Those that feel the need to be milked will return to the robot spontaneously. For cows that have not been milked after eight hours, we will move them between sections until they pass through the milking process. Currently, we have an average of 2.7 to 2.8 milkings per cow per day. In the robotic milking system, we use pelleted balanced feed with some binders and flavorings to stimulate consumption by the cows. The average intake is around 4.7 to 5 kilograms of balanced feed per cow in the robotic milking system. And you use flavorings, right? Yes, yes, I mentioned that. Is it used as a strategy for... Exactly. Well, when managing a robotic milking system, you need to think differently compared to the traditional milking system, right? This is a system where we perform precision feeding, I would say, at the individual cow level, as we have a lot of daily information from each animal, allowing us to adjust supplementation according to each cow's lactation stage and production. To do this, we have created some feeding tables. We are using an amount of eight kilograms of balanced feed until the peak of production. And after that peak, we increase it, adjusting the feeding according to the values in the tables we have developed. Cows producing below a certain amount of liters, which is the peak volume, receive a smaller amount of balanced feed, or we maintain that amount if they are within the stipulated average. Regarding the PMR feeding system, we distribute the feed three times a day, and we also have a feed pusher robot from the same brand, Delaval, which is set to push the feed closer every three hours. How does this help with milk production, feeding, and dry matter intake? In this type of system, the dry lot where the cow is in the waiting pen, the passing of the tractor with the mixer, the noise and its presence stimulate the cows to feed. We have noticed that the more times the tractor passes, the more the cows are encouraged to be milked. That's why we distribute the feed three times a day. In addition, to the feed being pushed every three hours by the robot. As I mentioned earlier, the ration used here is made up of chopped green pasture, alfalfa, and at this time of year, winter pastures such as oats. Part of the PMR, partially mixed ration, is made from fresh green forage. In the summer, we use a lot of alfalfa in the diet. Regarding formulation, we calculate it for a certain amount of liters of milk production. Generally, we formulate the PMR for about seven to eight liters less than the average production, and the rest is adjusted by the robot. As for the concentrate consumed by the cow, about 70% is provided in the PMR and the rest is adjusted by the robot. The PMR is formulated for all cows, including fresh cows and cows in advanced lactation. Therefore, precision feeding is adjusted by the robot. The PMR is formulated for an average production, seven liters lower, and the robot adjusts the supplementation according to each cow's individual production to maximize their potential. Regarding labor and robot management, today we have a general manager whom we call the dairy man who coordinates three shifts. There is one person per shift, each working an eight-hour shift following a 24-hour routine like any other continuous work. These are three shifts of eight hours a day. Currently, we are looking for ways to reduce the number of cows that need to be handled directly, which could provide more free time for the staff or allow them to focus on other tasks. And how have the data provided by the robots helped with your technical support? These systems offer us a large amount of daily information about what is happening with each cow. This allows us to make short-term decisions based on this data. The most important information for diet formulation is the individual lactation curves, considering cows, heifers, and other factors. 
Well, you asked how we started. We began with a pen of four stalls with manual milking, and then we expanded, reaching eight stalls, then 12, and finally 14. As the number of animals grew, we reached 500 cows in a conventional system and decided to incorporate technology, which brought us to where we are today. Problems? Not many, but we're happy. Because here in Argentina, if you don't fight, you don't solve anything. Everything was done with resources generated by the conventional farm, and we managed to acquire these four robots, which are now in operation, and that's how we got here. And regarding the labor, how does it work here? For example, in the transition from the conventional to the robotic system, is labor an important factor or not? Well, the labor here, we bought a small truck, an old dump truck, and we did the land leveling ourselves. Then we hired people to build the structural part, the office and the barn. The rest, like the pens and divisions, we did ourselves with the help of the farm workers under my supervision and my sons. Everything involving the installation of water lines, pumps, and managing the cows, we handled on our own. I even did some of the welding myself with the help of two employees. And for example, in the conventional milking system, how many people were needed? In the conventional farm, to work comfortably, we needed four people inside the milking parlor, plus one person outside to switch the drinking troughs, clean the pens, and provide water to the cows using trailers. So in total, we needed five people there. Now on the robotic farm with new staff, we work 24 hours in shifts. We have four employees, three permanent workers, and one who covers on days off, which amounts to 14 days of rest per month. We also have a dairyman who is the inseminator. Before, we worked with only two people, but we didn't get good results. Many cows weren't milked completely, and there were more cases of mastitis. Now, I believe we are on the right track. Yes, here we have eight-hour shifts. Yes, the shifts are eight hours, and they must leave the facilities clean, clean the lanes, because the other part of the robots and here in the office, the pump room and the cooling room, we have a permanent employee who works regular business hours. Additionally, we have one more employee. We transitioned from the traditional system because I have always liked to stay ahead with technology, maybe unconsciously, but I have always liked being at the forefront, producing with cutting edge technology. We thought this would be the solution, and it is but it needs to be well-managed. It doesn't run itself, even though it's robotic. It requires permanent staff, constantly. This has always been a personal interest of mine, related to technology. In the reproduction area, for example, we implemented collars about 10 years ago, but the initial result wasn't great because we didn't fully understand how the system worked, or the vendors didn't explain it well. We continued checking heats manually, comparing them to the heat detected by the collars. We weren't getting the results we wanted. It took quite some time, but we changed veterinarians, and now we exclusively use the collar system and perform insemination when the collar indicates about 18 to 20 hours after the start of the heat. Before, we didn't know exactly when the heat started, as we relied on staff who were sometimes unavailable. Heat manually is not easy whereas inseminating at the right time of ovulation is simpler. That's why, for the past four months, we've been using only the collar technology. We are in the milk room of the farm. The four robots send the milk directly to this tank, which is connected to the cooling equipment, with a capacity of about 12,000 liters. It is oversized for the peak period, allowing about a day and a half of storage. Keep in mind that there are no fresh cows on this farm, meaning there's no colostrum here. The cows give birth in the other traditional system and are brought here once a week already weaned and ready for production. All the milk collected here goes directly to the cooling tank. Milk from cows with mastitis is diverted to a separate cistern. When the truck arrives to collect the milk, the equipment is turned off, the milk is loaded, and another tank kicks in to store the milk while the loading is completed. As soon as the collection is finished, the tank cleaning system is activated and the cooling system is restarted. 
We are back at the farm after concluding the visit. In 2022, I came to know the Santa Fe Agro Instituto, where I took the course with Dr. Mike Hutchins. After that, I started working on an interesting project, the translation of the new NASM, which is now available in Spanish. After the course with Dr. Mike Hutchins, I began to delve deeper into the uh, robotic milking system and continued working with Santa Fe. We took a course given by Dr. Trevor, which is very practical and offers valuable insights for day-to-day -day operations. Here we have the dry lot, which I mentioned earlier. The idea is that the cows from this section will move into the ro robotic milking system. After milking, they go to the feeding lane, traveling along the entire length of the lane to the first pen, pen A. Then there is the intermediate pen, pen B, and the last pen, pen C. Every eight hours, the cows that need to voluntarily go to be milked pass through this corridor where we are installing intermediate gates. The cows that are authorized for milking will go to the robot voluntarily. However, some cows do not go on their own, so we have to retrieve them every eight hours. The idea is to keep moving them from one pen to another until they reach pen A, near the entrance, making it easier for the operator to take them to the robotic milking system.